We will now recap some of our basic knowledge about the operation of lenses and we will highlight the most important concepts that we need in the remainder of this course. So here you see a lens system uh, depicted. In blue we have the lens plane. Note that this holds as long as we look at a thin lens, so we look at a thin lens approximation. We have an object depicted with the arrow here of height h object um, at a specific position u from the lens plane. And the lens is characterized by a focal distance f, meaning we have a focal point before and a focal point after the lens at equal distances. Now the lens will provide an image of the object on the other side of the lens. And we can uh, see the position of this image by tracing the ray that goes through the center of the lens, tracing the ray that goes parallel to the axis, and then at this position from the lens plane on goes through the focal point on the other side of the lens, and the position where both cross is the equivalent point of the object, but then in the image plane. And of course, we have a similar line going through the focal point on this side of the lens and then traveling parallel to the optical axis, also crossing this point. Now, if we have a focal distance f and we have an object distance u, the object will be at the position v, where the relation between u, v and f is given by the famous lens maker's equation stating that 1 over the focal distance equals 1 over u plus 1 over v. We should also note that the same ray tracing we can do for every position on this object so that we effect retrieve the image that we have here. The only difference will be the point on the axis where the ray tracing would uh, lead to rays crossing uh, the axis on the position of the image on the other side of the lens. Now in this image we can depict some of the angles that are important in our further derivations. First we see that the angle with which the central ray traveling through the center of the lens crosses the axis on this side of the lens, if we depict that by beta, should be the same as the angle on the other side of the lens, depicted by beta. Further we see that we have an opening angle of the rays traveling on this side, which we call alpha object, so the opening angle on the object side, and we also have a different angle on this side of the lens depicted by alpha image. Note that the image will either be magnified version of the object or a deep magnified version of the object, leading also to a change in opening angles that we have on both sides of the lenses. Further, we see that the action of the lens on a ray traveling towards the lens plane parallel to the axis is to give this ray an angular deviation which we indicate by delta alpha. We can now see that we have a relation for the angles beta that we have here. The tangents of this angle, tangents of beta, is given by h object divided by the distance that this object is from the axis, so this is u. And we have a similar relation on the other side, but then with the height of the image of the object divided by the distance v. So if we look at this equation, we see that the magnification of the image by the lens, h image over h object, is given by v over u. And this is what we call the transversal magnification of the lens. Now our now, I already mentioned that besides giving a transfer of magnification, the action of the lens is also to change the opening angles of the beam. So we can similarly look at the angular magnification that the lens brings about. First, on this side of the lens, we have an expression for the tangents of alpha object, which is given by the triangle that we have here. So the tangents of alpha object is given by h object plus h image divided by the distance u. So I will write that down, h object plus h image divided by u. Similarly, we have an expression for alpha image that looks the same, tangents alpha image 
is given again this triangle here h object plus h image but now divided by the length we have here so this is given by v now i will make an approximation and the approximation is that we only look at very small angles that are involved here so in this case the tangents of alpha equals the angle itself and in this case it's the same thing we will see in later lectures that especially for electron microscopes indeed the angles involved are also are always very very small now from these two relations we can write the angular magnification as alpha image over alpha object we will note this as m a to indicate angular magnification as opposed to transversal magnification and we see if we work these equations out that this is equal to 1 over v divided by 1 over u as the same term of the sum of the object and image lengths falls out of the equation and of course this equals u over v so the angular magnification is 1 over the transversal magnification so for now these are the three equations to recall the lens makers equation the equation for the transversal magnification and the relation between the transversal magnification and the angular magnification